I work full time as an R&D engineer for a company that makes bespoke orthotics. So my day is pretty varied and kind of crazy. And recently I've been spending a lot of time designing orthotics for 3D printing, but I also do a lot of programming, electronics and maintenance while I'm there. But I guess if you want to know the story of my employment, it starts with me getting notified about the position by my old project mentor. And I nearly didn't send in an application because I was busy trying to do my own thing and had kind of given up finding jobs in my coastal area. But say in the heads prevailed and I ended up sending in a baller cover letter and a week later I was working. And I'll say now that this isn't a very typical engineering position. I'm actually the only engineer or even technically qualified person in the building, which is so vastly different from most corporate sort of jobs or any other position I've ever seen before. In some good ways and a few, well, yeah. Because it is awesome not having anyone above me telling me what to do and how to do it or feeling like I'm competing with other engineers for credit or feeling like I can't exercise any creativity, but it can also be a bit overwhelming having to figure everything out myself, solve everything myself, and I even struggle sometimes to describe the problems I'm facing and why they're not so simple to my boss and other colleagues. So I usually just keep everything to myself and solo everything myself from designing the manufacturing system to coding the sizing system to setting up and maintaining over a dozen printers to figuring out which materials to use, etc. It's straight fucked. And so far I've been lucky and haven't made any catastrophic errors, but there have been a few times where I've faced problems that I'd gotten myself into by my own promises and assumptions and which looked impossible to solve, but so far at least, I've made it out. Now, I was originally hired to kind of redesign their manufacturing system to squeeze out a bit more efficiency from their few big CNC machines which they were using to mill orthotics out of plastic bars, but... I noticed that 3D printers made so much more sense than milling and I mentioned it to my boss that it would save a lot of material waste and money and be straight cooler but he kind of discounted the idea because he had previously been told it was impossible and a few other competitors had tried it and failed. But I knew 3D printers had come so far in the last few months so I drew up a model, printed it at home on my ancient Prusa and bought it to him the next day and it blew his mind. You know, it was like that Henry Ford quote, if I asked them what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse, and I'll never forget the disbelief everyone had that I had created this thing at home for a dollar that looked cooler than any orthotic ever. It was awesome. So the next thing I know, we're ordering a dozen 3D printers, and I'm trying to figure out how to change from a machine code scaling and milling system to an SDL based one, but somehow thus far at least, it's all worked out, and if you live in Australia and you order an orthotic in the next few months, there's a decent chance it's one that I drew and printed personally. Now, I wanted to say that where I live, there are no engineering jobs. I literally have only seen three positions in the past six years open up, and only two people from my university still work remotely close to my area. So you can imagine how insanely competitive it is, so how is it that I secured a one in a million position? Well, part of it was my relationships, but a lot of it was what I did in my spare time. And I've said this a million times, but what you do with your free time is what will define you. And no company wants to hire a generic, fresh out of uni engineer. They want that kid who plays on cars, writes apps, makes fucking YouTube videos. And my employer actually said to me that I got the job because of my background in coding, something so simple and that so few <laughs> mechanical students seem to take seriously. And the reason my mentor talked me up to my employer was because of my final year project and how I applied a set of skills that were never taught to me in class. And this applies so strongly to small companies because they can't afford to hire a team of engineers. What they need is that one person who knows something about everything and everything about something and who can do those roles independently. So if you're interested in R&D sort of work or want that freedom and self-dependence that comes with it, you have to be picking up skills outside of classes. Although I will completely concede that fortune was on my side too. Finally, I hate to talk about money, but I know you're curious. And so I'll tell you that I presently make the average for an engineering graduate, which is more than most people I know and more than enough for me. But as with any engineering role, once you've gotten through the first year and have proven your worth and are at least no longer a liability, 
the pay increases are pretty significant, like 10% of your salary. And since I've been there, I've probably saved my company over 150K, so it fucking better be. Also, as a postscript note, whenever I tell somebody about what I do, they often think it's this super creative, well-paid, interesting, amazing job, and they always say that they'd like to do something like it. But the true nature of the work is very similar to most engineering jobs in that you are paid to solve complex problems, a lot of problems. And once you've solved them all, you then create them by picking new objectives or new business avenues because that process of finding problems and solving them is not only the nature of R&D, but of innovation. And frankly, like most jobs, it does become a bit wearing after a while. And it's a bit like learning how a magic trick is done in that it is interesting, but it spoils the magic. And so although you find some lateral interesting solutions to problems, you don't get the kick of seeing the magic like a customer would or your boss would because you know the trick, you created the trick, which can be very special in its own way, but it isn't this exciting, passionate, cathartic conjuring of insights and epiphanies that you'd think it would be, but a cold, rational process which often leaves you thinking, oh, that weird idea worked, cool, what's next? And it becomes so normal to not even care for the magic you're creating. <laughs> it's odd. I don't know if that makes any sense to anyone, but hopefully you know what I mean. Anyway, the second part of my final year project will be coming next week, so until then.